It's Johnny Jones. I'm here at home. And today... What the... We just teleported into a... To a grubby, dirty junkyard. Oh, God, last time this happened, I was wearing a dress. But anyways, today we have some... Uh, aluminum foil, and we're going to see if we can make it... Wait a minute, I wasn't wearing that nail polish. What the fuck is going on? You know, I don't think gray suits me either. Ugh. Anyways, I have thought... <laughs> if, I'm just thinking about the people who have never seen my channel. Ah. Anyways, so I was thinking, if you're out in the woods and a bear ate your foot and just left you there to come back, save you for seconds, you know, uh, would you be able to make a, 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 a tin foil antenna or aluminum foil antenna or aluminum foil antenna? Or however that you want to say it. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to put one together. It should be relatively easy. This is a new series of mine. It's called uh, uh, Can You Make an Antenna Out of dot 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 dot. And I'll just go, I'm going to score these based on several factors. Um, durability, um, practicality, reception, lots of things. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And we'll see what we can make out of this. I'm guessing a dipole will be the easiest, but, you know, we'll test some things out. Well, aluminum is very conductive, just like copper. That's why we use it in wiring and antenna systems anyway. But you don't want to hook aluminum and copper together. It can cause corrosion. If you don't know how that works, uh, look up a galvanic pair, or galvanic, however you want to say it. Pretty cool. Uh, we use it for a lot of test equipment, by the way, two dissimilar metals. Anyways, so what I've done here is I got myself a coaxial cable here that I'm probably going to use throughout the series. And I've went ahead and, uh, and soldered some clips on here. Because I can't solder copper and aluminum together. Um, we just got some uh, steel clips. This one is already falling apart. Yeah, damn it. Focus! Anyways, so <laughs> I need to fix that. But this rig right here is, is what we're going to use for most of our videos. Um, that way, if you want to build something similar, throw it in your backpack. Get yourself a nice little uh, battery. Oh, you're getting a good video with this too. The solar powered off the grid, constantly in use CB radio. Yeah, you can get one of these. Get yourself one of these. And, of course, get yourself one of these ah, things right here. That's a radio. Actually, maybe not this radio. This this might be a little too big of a radio for that bad. But, you know, just a CB radio. And, who knows? Maybe just some tin foil and you'll be good. Let's see. In the last antenna build video that we did, I made a vertical dipole. It worked great. We talked to Florida off four watts. It's like 600, 500 miles, something like that. Great, right? But I'm going to assume, in this case, I'm going to assume that you do not have that much coaxial cable. You got like nine foot, okay? And you don't have a bunch of uh, rope to hang this thing up. Maybe you got a shoestring, maybe you got dental floss, maybe you don't have anything at all. I thought, what could you make realistically in that case? And that would be an L-shaped dipole. An L-shaped dipole on the ground and I've made L-shaped dipoles, they work fine. They're not the greatest antenna in the world, but people use them all the time. Hams still use them, they're nice compromise antennas. Um, you do get some gain in this direction here. Let's go ahead and rotate this, this is three-dimensional. This is the antenna radiation pattern. You can see it does have a slight front-to-back ratio difference. This is 1.44 dB, I think, dBi. Um, so it doesn't really matter too much which side you talk off of, but you will get some gain in this direction whichever direction is facing the 90 degree angle. So I went ahead and modeled this over real ground. I didn't measure my Siemens per meter of my soil to get the conductance or anything, okay? I just modeled it as real, under real ground instead of free space. So what we're getting here is theoretical. Here are the numbers for it. This is... Tested a frequency of 27.185, that's middle of the band, that's 19. It's middle of the band because alpha channels, I've already talked about that. But if you want to know more about that, look up alpha channels. Alpha channels are pretty cool. Um, so our SWR over 50 ohms will be 1.25. That will be in, you know, what the, what the modeling software says are two different things. So take this with a grain of salt. We should have somewhere around there, but this isn't all going to be perfect. People have done studies on this. And you can change the radiation patterns by changing the 
vertical length and the or the horizontal length and vertical length. So we're going to look at the numbers. I've already calculated up what you need to do here if you, in case you don't care about any of this. So this is not going to be the same length as a free space dipole. Okay, so a free space dipole is actually going to be 217 inches. Okay, half wave, right? It's a dipole. This, an L-shaped dipole on the ground, is going to be 211 inches. So it's not entirely, you know, what we're used to. The top portion is going to be two or 112 inches the bottom will be 99 inches it's easy to get these numbers if you can remember a conversion if you want to convert meters to inches multiply by 3937 if you want to get um, feet from meters you just multiply by 3.28 this one is easier for me to remember so i don't focus on this one i just remember this one the way i remember that is 2 pi minus 3 so anytime i think what's that in feet you know what's meters to feet i say 2 pi minus 3, and that gives me 3.28. Um, that's what I did in this case, and then multiply by 12 to get inches. So either one of these you want to use is fine. As long as you know one of them, you can convert to anything else, of course. Um, so easy stuff, 112.99. Let's go get it built, see what we get. Hopefully it works out. I'm sure it's not going to be exactly like this. We may make it a little longer, a little shorter, depending on what ground we're over, how close they are, um, what's near us. We'll see. So this is a little longer than 112 inches. We're just going to divide this down the middle and have two lengths trimmed to resonance. Now, remember that you do have a little bit of length in the actual clips and the coaxial cable itself. But let's say you didn't have a uh, measuring tape. How in the hell would you measure this without a measuring tape? Well, it, Pretty much if you have a box of aluminum foil, you're going to know from the outside of the box, it's going to tell you the width of it. So you take a number, 112, divided by the width. This is 18 inches. So 112 divided by 18 is about 6.22. So clip you off some. Now you run this six times down the length and then go another half. Clip it there. Trim down till you have the lowest SWR. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's do it, bro. Well, let's just cut this in half now. Okay, so I have it cut in two now. We have both sides. Now we need to measure 112 and 99 on the other one. We can do that by using our, our the width of the uh, aluminum foil here. By the way, this is the most ridiculous thing in the world. If you happen to take a coaxial cable with you like this, just make yourself a wire dipole to stick up in emergency situations because this is ridiculous okay i get that but we're gonna try it anyway so let's go outside oh wait it's dark wait till tomorrow this ain't exactly going as planned and uh, maybe we want to make a uh, sort of wire out of it i tell you i do not envy the guy that would actually have to do this so i think i'm gonna keep it somewhere around uh 114 and work down from there not by clipping the top but by clipping the bottom i think we're going to use the uh, top of it as a hook to hook on a tree limb which you could do in a situation where it wasn't very windy it is kind of windy here today but we're going to see if that works uh, i want to just understand how practical this would be in a, in a in a situation but i highly doubt you want to use this just use anything but this <sighs> let's go all right come on come on yeah, there we go. This is already compromised antenna, so I ain't even worried about that bend at the top there. Uh, all right, let's see what we can do. Okay, this is the first test, and uh, yeah, it looks wonderful, doesn't it? So great looking. So the bottom, I have... Uh, it's not exactly measured perfectly, but this is about 100, and I bent it back on itself and crimped it there. That way, I don't trim too much. You know what I mean? Uh, this one hasn't been trimmed either. We're just going to see what it looks like right now and uh, see if we can talk to somewhere. God, don't do this. I mean, this is for fun, obviously. But if you, this would only work in an indoor setting because this is just going to be all over the place, blowing in the wind. I could see this on a wall though I could see this flat on a wall if you want to do that but uh, yeah here goes
All right, so we're on channel two. I'm gonna test the SWR. I haven't messed with the antenna at all, so I'm gonna try to do this with my legs and set it and all that. Let's see what the SWR is. That's already set and 1.5. <laughs> you totally use it. Let's go to 39. You don't wanna try it. Don't wanna test SWR on a channel where people are talking. Let's just set it real quick. Oh, people are talking. Okay, fine, 37. Let me set it. And come on. 1.5, 1.6. Not bad. We got, can't believe we didn't have to do anything to it because that's about a 100 inches instead of 99. And that's 114 inches. So, 100 inches, 114 inches, and uh, it's working. Um, not completely perfect SWR, but <laughs> 1.5, what, what more could you really ask for? I'm not gonna even mess with it. I'm just gonna see if we can get a contact. Let's go. Long Beach, Washington. I'll catch you later. Hey, Northern California, this is 150 North Carolina, radio check. Well, we're hearing Puerto Rico. Arizona, Maryland, I just want a guy two or three miles that way. So it's been incredibly difficult to get any contact. Our power was very low. Modulation was very slim. So I've raised one leg at this angle right here and just have this set up on a tree here and immediately our uh, SWR dropped to damn near nothing and we're actually getting more output power well the SWR looks like this on 17 I think getting off the ground helped a lot I think uh, that's probably what did it. it's not not the angle or anything but getting it off the ground I'm hearing a lot of South America CQ, CQDX, North Carolina 150, CQDX. Go ahead, break. What you doing there? Uh, just trying out my tinfoil antenna. <laughs> sound like you got tinfoil in your mouth. That's what you sound like all the time. Yeah, those are your shitty antennas. You kiss my cracker ass. You ain't got no cracker ass. You you you, you goat man. What did you say? You mean pig? Yeah, go twenty five. Twenty five. Hey oh. Hey pig, molester. What's up, dude? Oh, what you been up to? What the hell you doing up? What you on? You ain't blowing smoke or nothing. I am literally talking on a piece of tin foil. Oh, I still got the Galaxy. I just uh, trying out this stuff for a video here. It was kind of like, can I make an antenna out of this and that? So people want, people voted for that. So that's what I'm doing. Well, just get a drop cord, split it down the middle, and put one on way and one the other, put the end on. Yeah, I did that before though. So they wanted to see something different. They wanted to know, can you make an antenna out of? So I'm going to be doing all kinds of shit. Aluminum cans. I, I thought about pennies. Pennies would be a good one or uh Paper clips, I don't know. There you go, you figure it out. A storm is moving in. Will Johnny be able to get one final contact on his mobile device before the snow catches him? Break for radio check. Well, 
wasn't able to get anything done before the snow moved in. Mm. The only contacts we ended up getting, well, the only contact we ended up getting was only a few miles away. So I'm probably going to give this on a durability scale four. It does have decent tinsel strength when you crush it. Um, practicality a uh, five. I mean, I guess you could use it if you if you needed to. It's you know somewhat practical. It's more practical than pennies or something. Um, and the efficiency very poor. Now that could be due to several factors. It could be the non-homogeneous structure. I mean, look at this. Does that look smooth? Does that look like it's going to have a nice effect on the RF? No. And it's also multi-layered, which could be causing trouble. I don't know. I won't make any assumptions on that. But this, I won't say has been a failure entirely because it's a video. Anyways, it's Johnny Jones. Ooh, look at the moon. I'm here at home in a winter wonderland. And I'll see you later. Ah, it's cold. Ah, that's good.